Nick Dunn is stroking his wife Amy's hair, saying through a voiceover that he'd like to bash her head in and pick her brain apart to see what kind of secrets come spilling out. July 5, 2012, Nick goes to a bar he co-owns with his sister Margot. He brings her a board game that she throws in with a pile of others. She takes out two glasses and pours Nick and herself some bourbon. It's the day of Nick and Amy's fifth anniversary. Nick seems distressed, not wanting to be home at all. January 8, 2005, Nick and Amy first meet at a party in New York. He writes for a men's magazine and she writes personality quizzes for another. She comments on his chin making him look untrustworthy. He puts two fingers on his chin to seem more trustworthy. They take a walk and pass through a bakery that is getting a sugar delivery. Sugar is floating around everywhere as Nick and Amy walk through it. Nick tells Amy he has to kiss her now. He wipes some sugar off her lips and kisses her. He later goes down on her. In the present day, Nick returns home. He picks up his cat that's sitting outside on the front lawn. He enters his home and calls for Amy. No answer. He goes into the living room and sees a table flipped over and the glass surface is broken. Nick screams Amy's name, startling a neighbor. Nick calls the police. Arriving at his home are Detective Rhonda Boney and Officer Jim Gilpin. They inspect the place. Rhonda sees a smear of blood in the kitchen above the counter. In the living room, they see a wall with pictures of Amazing Amy, a book series written by Amy's parents. Rhonda comments that she loves the books and is surprised to learn that Nick is married to Amazing Amy herself. February 24, 2007, Nick and Amy go to a party held by her parents Rand and Mary Beth. Rand asks Amy to go sit with bloggers and reporters to answer some questions. She does, and they get her with mundane questions such as if she hasn't been married yet. Nick comes in pretending to be a reporter, and he proposes to Amy by putting a ring inside a booklet. Nick is brought into the police station for questioning about Amy's disappearance. Rhonda and Jim find it odd that he seems rather indifferent and passive when answering questions and the fact that he doesn't know if Amy has any close friends or her blood type. He goes to call Amy's parents. Her mother asks to speak to Rhonda. In the next room, Nick finds that his father Bill is in there after the police found him wandering around town, having left the treatment clinic. Nick drives him back to the clinic. Nick stays at Margot's house while the police inspect his home. A pregnant neighbor, Noel Hawthorne, who also claims to be Amy's best friend, comes by and asks about Amy. In the bedroom, Officer Jim finds an envelope in a clothing drawer, marked Clue 1 and notifies Rhonda. July 5, 2009, Nick and Amy have been happily married for two years. They go to the library and have sex in a quiet area. They discovered they got each other the same expensive sheet set, in the same color with the same thread count, because of a previous conversation where Amy complained about sleeping in a terrible bed with terrible sheets. When questioned about this clue, Nick says it's something Amy made as part of a treasure hunt for their anniversary. The first clue leads him and Rhonda to his office, where a pair of red panties are found. The second clue mentions a brown house, but Nick goes to his father's old home, which is painted blue. They find the third clue there, but Nick is unable to decipher it. Amy's parents fly in from New York as a press conference is held to spread awareness of Amy's disappearance. Nick asks others for help, but he appears emotionless and only makes himself look bad as he smiles next to the poster of Amy. Nick and Amy's parents meet with Rhonda to determine some possible suspects. Rand names an ex-boyfriend of Amy's, Desi Collings, who tried to commit suicide after Amy broke up with him, and a former classmate named Tommy O'Hara who allegedly sexually assaulted Amy, so she pressed charges. People go to the volunteer center to help find Amy. One person there is Desi Collings. Nick tries to come off as friendly to others, but Jim doesn't buy it. Even Mary Beth thinks he is acting like a homecoming king. One woman takes a picture with Nick. He asks her to delete it, but she refuses. Consequently, this and other actions from Nick hit the media, and TV personalities like Ellen Abbott paint him as an unempathetic sociopath. As Amy continued to document her married life in her diary, it is shown by their third year of marriage, both Nick and Amy were hit by the recession, and both of them lost their jobs. Amy tells Nick that she let her parents use her trust fund money, which is nearly a million dollars. Later on, Nick started losing interest in the marriage and began overspending on electronics like video games and a new laptop. Amy thinks he is trying to make her look like a cold, bitchy wife. To make matters worse, Nick and Margot's mother Maureen was diagnosed with breast cancer, forcing Nick and Amy to move back to his hometown in Missouri. This led Amy to think that she was disposable and that Nick didn't need her anymore. Over time, he just kept using her for sex. They had an argument over having kids, leading Amy to hit Nick in the chest, and Nick grabbed Amy and threw her against the staircase. He immediately looks shameful. 
A few nights after Amy disappears, Nick gets a text from someone saying they are outside Margot's house. Nick opens the back door. A young woman, Andy Fitzgerald, comes in and starts kissing Nick. He tells her to be quiet while Margot is sleeping. He makes sure that Andy hasn't said anything to anybody about her affair with Nick or that he has mentioned wanting to divorce Amy. They continue kissing and having sex. Nick lets Andy slip out the door early in the morning, thinking Margot is still asleep. However, she is standing in the kitchen and angrily berates her brother for lying to her, knowing what would happen if the cops or media were to find out about this. At night, there is a vigil for Amy. Nick stands alongside her parents, trying to seem more empathetic and hopeful to find Amy. Andy is in the crowd and calls him an asshole. Noel walks by and calls out to Nick, asking him if he knew that Amy was six weeks pregnant. The reporters chase Nick to the police car and they escort him out of there. Margot presses Nick about the pregnancy bombshell. He says he did not know she was pregnant, but that he did want kids and Amy didn't. Rhonda and Jim meet Nick back in his home and mention that someone wiped up a pool of blood in the kitchen. Nick also doubts that Amy knew Noel until Rhonda shows him photographs of the two of them, along with Noel's kids. She even hands Nick a document of recent transactions from Amy's credit card, though Nick says he never bought any of those items. Additionally, Rhonda presses Nick about the fact that he upped Amy's life insurance policy earlier that year. Rhonda also gets a call after Amy's sample results come back, concluding that she was indeed pregnant. While Nick tries to decipher the third clue of Amy's treasure hunt, Rhonda and Jim continue their investigation. They find a local dealer and show him a picture of Amy. He tells Rhonda that she came by and tried to buy a gun from him. They go back to Nick's father's home and go to the basement. In the furnace, they find what happens to be Amy's diary burnt slightly from the outside. Nick, meanwhile, figures out the clue and is led to the woodshed outside Margot's home, where a large pile of electronics is stored, and a box in the middle of it all. We go back to the morning of, and we learn the truth, Amy is alive and she staged everything to lead up to her disappearance. She is seen driving away from Missouri with her arm bandaged up slightly. For a while, Amy has been writing false information in the diary to leave an implication of Nick being abusive towards her, as well as personal fears that he may kill her. She even planned to fake her pregnancy by befriending Noel and making her think that Nick was hurting her. Amy drained her toilet and let Noel drink enough fluids for her to use the bathroom, so Amy stole her urine and left a sample for the cops to find. On the day of their fifth anniversary, Amy lets Nick go about his day while she sets up a crime scene to make Nick look guilty. She has even planned in case she needs to kill herself to completely frame Nick. To make sure she's not found out, she cuts her hair, dyes it, and makes herself look unkempt and disheveled and she hides out at a small resort under the name Nancy, even hitting herself with a hammer in the face to sell it. She befriends a woman named Greta. Amy tells her how she came across Nick leaving the bar with Andy during a snowy night, wiping her lips before he kissed her the same way he kissed Amy when they first met. Nick brings the box inside and opens it to find Punch and Judy dolls, with the Judy doll missing a mallet. Together, he and Margot deduce that Amy has framed Nick for her disappearance. Nick goes to New York to find Tanner Bolt, a lawyer who has been following Nick's story in the media. He agrees to help Nick prove his innocence. He gives Nick the contact information of Tommy O'Hara so that Nick can ask him questions. Nick meets Tommy in a bar. Tommy says he met Amy at a party and had consensual sex with her, but she later framed him and made it look as though he raped her. Now he is a registered sex offender and has not been able to get a job. Nick later visits Desi after finding his address from a letter he wrote to Amy. After Nick asks Desi about his side of the story regarding his attempted suicide, Desi closes the door on him and walks back inside his house. At the resort, Amy plays mini-golf with Greta and her friend Jeff. At one point, she jumps up and drops her fanny pack full of money. Greta and Jeff notice. The next day, they get Amy in her room and rob her. Now penniless, she calls someone from a payphone. Tanner goes to Missouri to help Nick and Margot clear up Nick's image. Nick tells Tanner what he thinks has been going on with Amy dropping clues that only he would really know. For instance, the reason he knew that the Brown house in the treasure hunt clue was his dad's house was because they'd pretend that his dad was a spy called Mr. Brown. Nick also admits to the affair, which Tanner says he ought to tell the cops about so that it gives them one less reason to think Nick had a motivation to kill Amy. Nick later books an interview on TV with Sharon Schieber. Tanner coaches him to make him seem more likable by having Nick admit that he's been unfaithful and dishonest, which would earn him some possible points in the media. On the day of the interview, Tanner keeps trying to get Nick to come off less smug and more genuinely upset by pelting him with gummy bears in his dressing room until Nick gets it right. At the same time, Desi finds Amy in a casino after he calls her. She never mentions getting her money stolen, but she continues to play up the abused wife angle. As they leave, 
and as Nick meets Sharon, a bombshell hits the news. Andy confesses to her affair with Nick at a press conference, in front of Amy's parents. Desi and Amy see the news at the casino while Sharon gets wind of it at the same time. Mary Beth tells reporters that her and Rand's love for Nick ended then and there. Desi takes Amy back to his home. Together, they watch Nick's interview with Sharon, which Nick is watching with Margot. Nick convincingly comes off as remorseful for the affair, but he insists that he did not kill his wife. Sharon lets him speak directly into the camera to say something to Amy. He says he loves her and drops mention of the woodshed before putting two fingers on his chin, knowing Amy would recognize that. Margot checks the internet and sees Nick is already getting more love. Things take an unfortunate turn when Rhonda and other officers show up at Margot's home with a search warrant after getting an anonymous tip that there were loud noises coming from Margot's woodshed. They find all the electronics from the credit card bill. Both Nick and Margot are taken into custody. Rhonda reads to Nick the pages of Amy's diary, which is ended with this man may truly kill me. Jim brings in the missing Judy Mallet from the puppets, which gives Rhonda reason to implicate Nick and place him under arrest. Nick tries to give his argument, but Tanner shuts him up. At Desi's home, Amy learns that Desi has security cameras installed nearly all over the place. While he's out at work, she soaks her nightgown in wine and crawls to the camera, making it look like she's just been raped as she fakes crying. Nick and Margot are released on bond. The media continues to hound them on the way out, now that everyone is convinced Nick is a cold monster. Nick quietly whispers to himself, come home, Amy. I dare you. Amy waits for Desi to come home. She gets a wine bottle and puts it in herself as she plans something. When Desi gets home, Amy seduces him and agrees to go with him to Greece. They go into the bedroom and start having sex. When Desi is caught off guard, Amy grabs a box cutter she was concealing and slashes his throat. She becomes drenched in his blood and leaves him to die. Nearly a whole month after Amy's disappearance, Nick looks out his window to see that things seem quiet. In his driveway is Amy, still covered in blood. The reporters and neighbors are shocked and begin clamoring around Nick and Amy as she walks up to him. He whispers to her, you fucking bitch, before she collapses in his arms. At the hospital, Amy makes a story about how Desi kidnapped and raped her before she made her heroic escape. Rhonda asks her questions regarding the items in Margot's woodshed, but Amy ignores them in favor of telling her rape story, while also being heavily medicated on painkillers. The reporters follow her and Nick home, happy that she's alive and that Nick is now vindicated. However, Nick knows something is wrong. Amy lets him hop in the shower with her as she washes Desi's blood off her, and to make sure Nick's not wearing a wire. She all but outright states that she did frame Desi and murdered him to make her return seem heroic. Nick meets with Tanner, Margot, and Rhonda about this revelation, though without sufficient evidence and with everybody on Amy's side, they cannot prove that she murdered Desi and framed Nick for her disappearance. Nick and Amy make their first public appearance together at the Volunteer Center, posing as a happily reunited couple. They are even set to have an interview with Ellen Abbott. Amy gives Nick a gift, which is a pregnancy test. It's positive. Nick knows this is another ploy of hers to keep him with her, and he slams her head against the wall, calling her a cunt. She tells him she's the same cunt he fell in love with. Reluctantly, Nick joins Amy hand in hand for the interview. They break the news to Ellen, who is overjoyed and hugs Amy. Margot later finds out about the pregnancy and cries for her brother, knowing he is stuck with the real monster for another 18 years. The film concludes with Nick stroking Amy's hair again, wondering to himself just what she's thinking. Thanks for watching Real Recapped. Please hit the subscribe button so you can get notified for more videos like this.